Welcome to Chromaticus. Today we're going to talk about chromatic mediant chords, what they are, how to use them, and what chord scales go with them. When I write these episodes, I always try to do some research on other YouTube videos and other teachers to kind of see what they put out there to see if there's anything missing from a lot of these videos that I can then make a main focus of my video to try and fill in some of the knowledge gaps for the students. For this particular topic, chromatic mediants, I noticed that they all seem to do the same thing where they show you the big chart that shows you all the different chromatic median possibilities and they demo some of the two chord progressions and so you can kind of get an idea of what they sound like and then they just sort of stop. So they've given you this new tool that they haven't actually explained to you how to use. Imagine going to a samurai master to learn how to sword fight, and he shows you this awesome sword and all the materials that go into it, and the process of making it, and the history behind the sword, and then he yells, FIGHT! You're gonna die, because he didn't show you how to actually use this sword, he just explained what it is. By the end of this episode, I want you to have all the tools that you need to actually be able to start composing using these chromatic median chords, and knowing what chord scales to use, depending on what the content Context is. Before we get into the actual chromatic median chords, I think it's important to go over a couple of things such as medians, submedians, parallel keys, and relative minor. In any major key, let's take C major for example, just to make it really simple, your C major will be your one chord or your tonic chord. Your three chord, or E minor in this case, would be your median chord. And your six chord, in this case A minor, would be your submedian chord. These are all diatonic chords to the key of C major. Parallel keys are two keys that share the same tonic or root, but differ in modal quality, such as major or minor. So for example, if you have C major, its parallel minor key is C minor. So both keys revolve around the note C, but one is major in quality and the other is minor. Relative minor is a bit different. If you take C major again, its relative minor is A minor. That's the minor mode that begins on the sixth degree of C major. Both keys share the exact same seven notes of the diatonic scale, but the tonal center has shifted from C to A. In C major, the central pitch that all the melody and the harmony revolve around is C, which is also the root or the tonic, and C major is the one chord. In the relative key of A minor, it's the same notes, but now they all revolve around the pitch A. A is your tonic note, and your A minor is your one chord. Now that we've covered parallel keys, relative minor, medians, and submedians, we can now talk about chromatic medians, which as you might have guessed are chromatic alterations of the median and submedian chord. The roots of two chromatic median chords are either a major or minor third apart, and they either share one or more common tones with each other, or they share a quality such as major or minor. This relationship can be between two chords or between two sections of a piece such as an A section and a B section. Let's take a look at the chart that shows all the different chromatic median possibilities. This is our chromatic median chart. At first glance, it might look complicated, but once we break it down, you'll see that it's actually fairly simple. Let's break the chart up into three parts. The first part is these four chords on the left side of the chart. First, you have the key of C major. Its parallel minor is C minor. C major's relative minor is a minor, and A minor's parallel major is A major. The second part of the chart is these four chords right here. E minor is the diatonic three chord, or median chord, in the key of C major. The A minor is the diatonic six chord, or submedian, in the key of C major. And likewise, C major is the diatonic three chord in A minor, and F major is the diatonic six chord in A minor. These six chords up in the top right section are the chromatic medians in relation to C major whereas these six chords in the bottom right section are the chromatic median chords for the key of A minor. Let's first start with the key of C major. The three chord again is this E minor chord. This chord has three chromatic alterations that you can use instead. The first chord is E major. Its root is a major third away from C major and it shares one common tone, the E natural. This chord is essentially just a chromatic alteration of this chord. If you take the third of the chord G and you simply raise it a half step to G sharp, you get E major. The next chord is E flat major. Now when you see an E flat, you know that this chord is not related to C major, but rather it's parallel minor C minor. If however you are using this E flat major chord in the key of C major, it does still share one common tone, the G, and the root is a minor third apart from C. And they also share the quality of major. The next chord is E flat minor, and this is a chromatic alteration of the E flat major chord. If you take the third or G and you simply lower it one half step, you get G flat. The root is also a minor third away from C, but it shares no common tones with C major. It's worth pointing out that the chords which share common tones with each other will have the smoothest transition between them, 
whereas the chords that share no common tones will sound more disconnected and out there. That's not to say that they don't sound good, they sound great. It's a very unique sound, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, if we're still looking at this from the perspective of C major, the sixth chord or submediant also has three chromatic median chords that you can use. The first is A major, which is a chromatic alteration of A minor. You simply raise that C up a half step to C sharp. The root is a minor third apart from C. C down A minor third is A, and it shares a common tone of E natural. The next two chords are both A flat chords. Notice that they have E flats in them, so that's how you know they are related to C major's parallel minor, C minor. The A flat major chord shares a common tone C with C major, and the root is a major third apart. And the next chord, A flat minor, again, you're taking that C and you're chromatically lowering it one half step to C flat. The root is still related to C major by a major third, but these share no common tones. Let's look at the parallel minor next, which is C minor. The diatonic three and six chords in the key of C minor are the E flat major and the A flat major. So in the key of C minor, your chromatic median chords would be E minor, E major, and E flat minor. And the chromatic submedians would be A minor, a major, and A flat minor. The bottom half of the chart works the same way. If you're in the key of A minor, the diatonic three chord and six chord are C major and F major. The three chromatic median chords are C minor, C sharp minor, and C sharp major. And the three chromatic submedian chords are F minor, F sharp minor, and F sharp major. And if you're looking at the key of A major, the diatonic three and six chord are C sharp minor and F sharp minor. So the chromatic medians for A major would be C major, C minor, and C sharp major, as well as F major, F minor, and F sharp major. You can also use these chromatic median relationships not just between chords, but between two different key centers. For example, you could write an entire A section in the key of C major, and then in the B section, you could modulate to something like E flat major. Now I bet you're thinking, yeah, that's cool, but what am I supposed to do with these chords? And how do I write a melody or a solo over top of them? What scales am I supposed to use? Well, it really depends on the context. Context always matters. I'm gonna say that again. Context always matters. I'll give you an example. Take this very basic tonal progression in the key of C major. You have a one chord, a four chord, a dominant five chord, and a one chord. All, right? All diatonic chords in the key of C major. Now what if I wanted to spice up the harmony a little bit? Maybe instead of this subdominant chord here, I borrow a chord from subdominant minor. A flat major is the flat six chord from parallel C minor. It's a subdominant chord. So when I borrow it in the key of C major, it's a subdominant minor modal interchange chord. Modal interchange just means that I'm borrowing it from a parallel mode. So with our new harmony, it would sound like this. In this context, for the A flat chord, I would use the chord scale from the parallel key of C minor where this chord is borrowed from. So the chord scale for this chord would be A flat Lydian. Now on a purely technical level, the C and the A flat chords are chromatic medians of each other. Their roots are a third apart, C down a major third is A flat, and they share the common tone of C. So I'm not saying that it's wrong to say that they're chromatic medians, but personally, and take this with a grain of salt, I wouldn't think of them that way in this context because I'm thinking about parallel diatonic keys of C major and C minor. Both chords and chord scales come from these diatonic functional keys. What if we use those same two chords, the C and the A flat, but in a different context where we're no longer thinking about diatonic scales and functional harmony like parallel major and minor in a jazz context. Maybe we're not writing tonal progressions at all, but are rather looking for a more exotic sound often found in film scores, something like this. In this context, I would actually refer to these as chromatic medians of each other, and therefore I would take a very different approach when thinking about chord scales. Before I get into the scales, I do wanna make very clear that there are different schools of thought on this topic, and different people will have varying approaches to how they analyze this. 
such as in order to be a chromatic median, it has to retain median function. In other words, it has to be a three chord or a six chord in relation to a one chord. So when you have symmetrical scales and non-functional harmony and chromaticism, you're sort of blurring all of those lines where there might not be a sense of a one chord because you never repeat any chords and you're sort of just floating around between all these different chords. This is something to keep in mind, but it's important that you learn how to use what I'm showing you today to write music, because at the end of the day, people sitting in your audience aren't going, hmm, I wonder what his analysis of these chords were. They're not thinking that. They're just listening to the music, and if it's good, they're gonna enjoy it. So at the end of the day, just follow your ears. If you look back at the chart of all the chromatic median possibilities, you can actually unify every chord in the chart with just two scales. The first one is called the augmented scale, which is a symmetrical hexatonic or six note scale. And the other one is called the half whole scale, which is a symmetrical octatonic scale or eight note scale. The augmented scale. Some composers like to think of this as two augmented triads superimposed over top of each other. Or as three major triads superimposed over top of each other. I like to think of it just as it is, a symmetrical scale composed of a repeating pattern of two intervals, up a minor third, up a minor second. Any way you want to think of it is fine, as the results yield the same hexatonic scale, in this case C augmented. This scale yields these major and minor triads, C major and C minor, E major and E minor, G sharp major and G sharp minor. You can also use the enharmonic spelling of G sharp and instead call it A flat and you'd have A flat major and A flat minor instead of G sharp. If you remember the example I showed you before in that film score style, if you wanted to write a melody, you could use the C augmented scale to unify all of those chords. There are other chords such as A augmented, C augmented, or even a B major dyad without the fifth and many other chords that you can get nice and creative with. I've just highlighted the major and minor triads since we're relating this to the chromatic median chart. The other scale is the half whole scale. This is also a symmetrical scale, this time composed of a repeating pattern of up a half step, up a whole step, hence the half whole scale. This scale has quite a few different names, but I prefer this name because it's the most straightforward. It tells you exactly how to construct the scale. In this case, we have the C half whole scale, which yields these chords, a C major and a C minor, E flat major and E flat minor, F sharp major and F sharp minor, as well as A major and A minor. This scale also has a ton of other chords, such as C dominant seven, C diminished seven, F sharp dominant seven, etc. I again just highlighted the major and minor triads since we're relating this to the chromatic median chart. Looking back at the chromatic median chart, we can see how these scales unify the chords. The C augmented scale will unify the C major and minor, the E minor and major, and the A flat major and minor. The A augmented scale will unify the A minor and A major, F major and F minor, as well as the C sharp minor and C sharp major. And if we take the C half whole scale, it unifies all these chords, C major, C minor, A minor and A major, the E flat major and minor, as well as the F sharp minor and major. Notice these chords here in the middle are just repeats, A minor and major repeat here, and C minor and major repeat here in the chart. So even though there's 12 chords circled here, it's really only actually eight different chords. But eight major and minor triads in just one scale is still pretty sweet. So if we overlay both scales on top of each other, you can see how it unifies every chord in the chart. Now technically it's actually three scales, not two scales, because you have the C half whole scale, the C augmented scale, but then you also need the A augmented scale for the bottom half of the chart. So technically it's three scales, but two different types of scales that connect every chord. I'm not gonna take the time to demo every single chromatic median progression in the chart. You can play around with that on your own, but I do wanna show you three different examples that use these chords in different ways and how to approach them. In the first example, we just have a two chord progression. We have A minor and F minor. The common note C in the melody is held over between chords. Keeping that same common tone in the same voice between different chord changes will result in the smoothest sounding transition. If you remember from the chart, A minor and its chromatic median F minor both come from the A augmented scale. So you could use that for this whole passage to write a melody. And the last thing is the progression starts in A minor. There's an A minor repeated in the middle and then it sort of bookends with another A minor. So this has very much has the feel of A minor with a chromatic median. Example 
Example number two is a bit different. Okay, the C or the one chord is also bookended right here and it repeats in the middle, but then we have two different chromatic median chords. Okay, C and E flat you could take from the C half whole scale, but the A flat doesn't come from that scale. That comes from the augmented scale. So you would have to change scales to accommodate this chord. There's a couple ways you could approach that. You could use the half whole scale for C and E flat, and then this C would be kind of optional. You could keep it half whole scale for this measure, or you could switch here to the C augmented scale for the next three measures. That's really gonna be up to the composer where they want that transition to be and what kind of sound they're looking for. Another option is if you stack the C chord, the E flat chord, and the A flat chord, because they share some common tones, you end up with a slightly different hexatonic scale that you actually could use for all of these chords to write a melody with. So in most cases you have options and you can go in different directions depending on what you like. But again, those decisions are, are really ultimately up to the composer. I included this third example to show you what I was talking about earlier when I mentioned the gray area where you're sort of blurring the lines because you have C minor and the E flat minor, which look like chromatic medians of each other. And then A minor and C sharp minor could be chromatic medians. But if you look at the whole passage, D major, D flat major, B major, none of those chords come from the chromatic median chart at all. None of the chords repeat. So this first chord, is only played here. It doesn't bookend, there's a C sharp at the end. It's not played again in the middle anywhere. So there's really no indication that this is a one chord and this is a, a three chord. This is really just a bunch of wandering major and minor triads. So in this case, I wouldn't analyze them as chromatic medians. This is very much just a chromatic passage. If you're moving around sort of chromatically to different chords and using major and minor triads, a common term for this is pantriadic chromaticism. And you can essentially just play any major or minor triad on any root that you want and just kind of move around. This is really common in film scores or parts of a story where there's just this uneasiness, this kind of lost, wandering feeling, a moment in the movie where you don't really want the music to sound sort of, you know, cohesive or um, lyrical, where you want it to be very kind of odd and uneasy and, and really, really out there. So here's what that example sounds like. There's one more thing I wanna mention to make sure I'm very clear is you're not limited to the scales that I just talked about. It depends what chords you use, but I'll give you an example, the Imperial March from Star Wars by John Williams. It's largely based around two chords, a G, which is actually just the note G repeated in different octaves, but when the melody comes in, it sort of implies a G minor triad, and the other chord is E flat minor. Now, if you respell that G flat as an F sharp, you get that G harmonic minor scale. And that's largely what he uses in the piece. It's those two chords, G harmonic minor. Now it's John Williams, so there's some chromatic movement and he uses other variations of minor scales. And there's even chromatic chordal movement, um, but it's largely in harmonic minor. So you have other options depending on what chords you actually pick. Well, there you have chromatic median chords. At this point, you should be able to start composing using a much more unique and expansive harmonic palette, using the chromatic median chords from the chart, as well as the two symmetrical scales that we talked about. If you have any questions at all, feel free to post down below or send me an email. That's gonna do it for us today. Keep studying, keep practicing, keep growing. See you next time.